afternoon and welcome to the first distinguished lecture on sustainable living on the theme of the creating of sustainable living platform. My name is Amartya Sahana. And my name is Dima Chaturakuti. We will be the host for today's talk. The first thing first, for the safety purposes, the following video will guide you what to do if there are some emergency happening. Please enjoy the video. Before you start your meeting, we'd like to take a moment of your time to familiarize yourself with some safety features in the event of an emergency situation. During an emergency situation, remember these three things. Know your exits. Remain calm. Listen to staff. The meeting room you are in right now has the following exits. Familiarize yourself with these exits, which have exit signs above them. <laughs> Professional staff members of Energy Complex are ready to help you out in the case of an emergency. So once you know your exits, remaining calm is very important and makes for a very speedy and smooth exit from the building. And please do not use elevators during fires. Staff will direct you to either stairways and lead you safely down until you reach the ground floor. We hope you have a safe and pleasant meeting at Energy Complex. Thank you, and have a safe meeting. Well, um, since we aim for sustainability, and this seminar is mostly paperless and USB display. You will find a copy of the program, the introductory brochure of our four sponsors, and also a sustainability report, an annual report of PCL, Toyota Motors, and BASF. Uh, we will upload the presentation file after the lecture, and you can download uh, the file from the webpage www.ptc.tulang.ac.th slash CSEP2013. And you may also search for a presentation video on YouTube as well. First of all, I would like to invite Mr. Stephen Cole, the senior white president of EA as a East Asia regional headquarters for the opening remarks. Please welcome Mr. Stephen Cole. Swati uh, Prabh. It is a pleasure to be here in a platinum rated eco friendly building on behalf of PTT Group because uh, today we kick off the first distinguished lecture for sustainability for ESF. Sustainability and sustainable development is a very important topic that touches each and every one of us because there are 7 billion people in the world always looking for a higher standard of living. At this rate, we will not be able to sustain such a consumption level for future generations. It is very important that we work together to find new ways of doing things. The topic of sustainability has to balance the economic needs of people and society, but also ecological protection. At the same time, it has to look after the social interests of everybody in society. If you think about it, this has to be done on a complete and holistic basis. It cannot be done with any one individual. It cannot be done by any one company. It cannot even be done by one country itself because ecological and social issues today move across borders, just as economic issues always have. To achieve this, BASF recognizes that we must work across borders. We must work with stakeholders in different countries and different backgrounds. 
to bring together a platform, a place to discuss the best way of sustainable development. For this reason, we have started this lecture series, and we have started it with this particular event in Thailand. Why Thailand? Well, I'm also learning myself every day. Thailand is the country where PTP Group is researching very much the use of different fuels in motor vehicles. It is a place where Toyota Motors Corporation is coming to really expand the use of sustainable vehicles. And for BSF, that's a very good reason to be here. On top of that, we are very fortunate, BSF, to have been working with Chula Longhorn University, NIDA, and also the Polymer Society of Thailand over the last few months to discuss the topic of biodegradability and non-toxicity. These all come together today for this first lecture on the energy platform, on a platform that is sustainable, that is good for Thailand, but also good for the world. So I look forward to uh, speaking with you today in this platform, and I would like to introduce my colleague from Thailand, Kun Bun Thai. Thank you, Stephen. Professor, distinguished face from association, University, from the sector, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all, the Asian Thai, it's my privilege and honor that we be here to have the first distinguished lecture for sustainability. And thank you very, very much to Stephen and all this kind of institution to form this kind of sustainability distinguished lecture today. And for me, sustainability is very clear, is not a more far reaching topic. Basically, it's very close to our daily life already. Because Stephen has been mentioned talking about 6.5 to 7 billion population we have now today. Would you believe in year 2050, the number of the population will ramp up to the level of 9 billion. And it creates a lot of pressure about the resources where we have been living in a very challenging environment. I'm saying this because basically now today we already use up 1.5 times of the resource the earth can be generated. And if we don't change our behavior, if we don't change the way we live in terms of also the business model, then in 2050, then we need altogether three planets to form this kind of the challenge of the Nigerian population. So I'm really glad to be part of the first distinguished lecture for sustainability today. And I'm very, very confident that will be this kind of the first starting point where we can have a sustainable future. Let's grow and jointly develop this sustainability concept to have, I would say, a future for our community, country, and in the end, the planet will be. Once again, thank you very much for the Thank you very invite Dr. Fong Tong Wanafuna and Yutia, the Dean of the Petroleum and Petrochemical College, on the stage for the message from the Petroleum and Petrochemical College. Please welcome Dr. Fong Tong. On behalf of the Petroleum and Petrochemical College, Jilalukorn University, I'm honored to be a part of this consortium. I consider this is a unique collaboration. Uh, as you may see, we have four partners. One is from private sector, BSF. Two from academy. One is business school, Nida. The other one is technology, PPC. And the last one is Polymer Society. So this is four minds, only one heart, centered on sustainability. So I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the two keynote speakers, organizing team, and um, all invited speak, uh, guests in this room for being here. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Ifut Onsikun, 
the dean of MEGA Business School, on the stage for a greeting opening speech from the MEGA Business School. Please welcome. As a business school, I think we have the responsibility to develop the business leader and functional manager. And we have the idea that we should implant the idea of business can make money and still can do something good for society and environment. By creating economic value, business can share this value to society without, create, without creating business or economic value. Business cannot have enough power to do something good for others. The idea of making money and doing something good for society is not a conflicting, not conflicting idea. And I hope this event can be a good example for the big business that implement something both good for business and environments. I hope this event will be a successful event. And thank you very much for joining us. Next, may I call Dr. Sivabun Jira Chan Chai, the president of the Polymer Society of Thailand, to come on the stage for the opening congratulatory message and some introduction of the Polymer Society of Thailand. Please welcome Dr. Sivabun. President and CEO of the PTT PCL, uh, Mr. Stephen Ko, the Senior Vice President of the SF East Asia Regional Headquarters, Mr. Nobuhiko Koga, Project General Manager of Toyota Motor Corporation Japan, the consulting colleagues, and distinguished guests. Well, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to express my appreciation for your valuable time to join the Sustainability Consulting Forum today. At the same time, I also would like to acknowledge the ESF Asia Regional Headquarters with the Stephen Ko and uh, Professor Ujo Kim, who are not only the consulting initiative, but also providing all supports to make this happening to be true today. The Polymer Society was founded in 1991 with an ultimate goal of establishing local and international networks between academia from universities and research institutes and engineers from industries in plastics, petrochemicals, and polymers related. In order to achieve the goal, the society offers seminars, workshops, and conferences. At the moment, we have about 500 members, with 80% are the university professors, institute researchers, and 20% from the private sectors. So it is a great honor today for the society to be a member in the sustainability consulting since it is another important activity to represent the Thai polymer community. So last but not least, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the success of the distinguished sustainability lecture today in Advance. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sofu. Now it's time for the first lecture. I would like to invite Dr. Fong Pong Ha to Nga the Dean of the Petroleum and Petrochemical College, Tulangan University, to be the chair of the lecture. It is my pleasure to introduce the first keynote speakers of the first distinguished sustainability lecture we have here today. Dr. Pai Ben Chu Chua Tawon, the President and Chief Executive Officer of PTT Public Company Limited. I have to admit that Dr. Pyrene may need any introduction at all. Both of us here know him very well. He's been on the news, television, newspaper, magazine, almost every day or every week. Um, I myself have known him for many years. I used to call him Ajahn because um, he graduated 
bachelor degree in chemical engineering from Chulalongkorn University. And after he got his PhD from Tokyo Institute of Technology, he had taught at Faculty of Engineering, Chulalongkorn University, for almost a year. I think of Dr. Pai Lin as an ideal speaker for sustainability issues. Why most people often think of sustainability as in the context of environment only. In fact, sustainability has covered three aspects, environment or ecology, economics, and social. Dr. Pairin, among a very few people, has realized that all these three aspects at the very early stage of his career. And he has tried to work on each aspect as well as trying to balance all three aspects together. He has started his career at National Petrochemical Corporation, where he involved in building the first petrochemical complex in Thailand in Magdaput. Then he switched to banking business with Bank of Bank, and then back to petroleum and petrochemical again. As a CEO of IRPC, he has laid a solid foundation of R&D at IRPC, not only to build our own capacity in human resources and technology, but to give good product to the people, and this green product help save the Mother Earth. He had also steered a company to develop strong relationship with the community before the word CSR has even spread in Thailand. Since 2011, he has become president and CEO of PTT, the position where he can fulfill his vision towards sustainability, covering all aspects. To set business and environmental on the same path, he has initiated technology advance and green national oil company, or TACNOC, and green roadmap, roadmap for PTT. So the green technology and green products will be developed. This will help sustain the country needs without harming the environment. For people and community, he has initiated the project to set up PTT leadership and learning institute and to build the Rayong Science Academy and Rayong Institute of Science and Technology to foster and nurture young generations of scientists and researchers, for improving and sustaining the, company, the, the country competitiveness. Well, that is just an order. I think you are thirsting for the main course. The title of this talk today is Energy and Environment in the Context of Sustainability. Now it's time. I would like to invite Dr. Pailin on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Pairin Chucho Kawai. Ladies and gentlemen, and colleagues from our aging business, it's my honor, really my honor to be here to share with you some of our thoughts concerning sustainability that we always work in in PDT. Before I get into my talk, let me also welcome all of you to this uh, energy complex building. This is where most of our company in the group located. And I hope you find our facility at uh, accommodating. And as somebody mentioned before, this is the first building that has been certified uh, with platinum class building in Hassan. My talk today will be about one hour and then we we'll touch on four points as shown here on the agenda. First, I will talk about the global CEO study on sustainability. This was done for the United Nations meeting in New York, September of this year, which is about two months ago. Secondly, I will talk about energy for society principle set by the World Economic Forum. And then I will touch on the subject of energy literacy in Thailand and wrap up with the PTT ways of sustainability development. May I first start by showing a short video clip 
made for the United Nations meeting in Sakhmarinki two months ago. This is for the, some afternoon tea. Learning 
as companies, how to frame, think, and act on sustainable business. Each of us has to inform each other and come together in new and exciting ways in order to be transformative. Both Benjamin Franklin here in the US who actually said that you may delay, but time will not, and lost time will never be found again. The video is a result of a study prepared for the UN World War Compact Leading Summit held in New York, September this year. You can see that uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon said here, in an attempt to mobilize and expand a network to act on the sustainable development. Obviously, the UN leaders, sustainable development is one of an important factor for the global leaders. I was featured among the selected CEOs in the video from over a thousand interviews, perhaps because of our unique angle we take on sustainability, which we call the learning track for sustainability. Uh, this I will elaborate more on it later in the later part of my talk today. First, let me say that PDT was born and led with many unique features itself a national energy company where it is both state-owned enterprise and a publicly listed company. In addition, PTT Group is also collectively the largest pieces of the stock exchange of Thailand at 25% of the whole browse. As a result, at this moment, many entities, individuals, have claimed ownership of PTT, whether rightly or not so. It's a different issue. Let me recap just a bit on the videos. The study was conducted from about 1,000 CEOs, CEOs globally. Mostly that sustainability is an important feature of their future success. This should not be a surprise to anyone. And however, this is especially true for most of us in the energy industry, where there has always been a growing issue on what we call the license to operate. General public has increasingly more or want to have more influence or say on our legal or our moral right to do our business. And, and although most CEO believe that the business should be should really and deliver sustainable development goals, we also see the needs for government intervention and regulation. And finally, the study translates to seven steps, as shown here on this slide. I think you all can read faster than I can talk, so I will not go into detail for each of the steps. So this is what the UN Global Compact CEO study concludes. Let me move on to the next one on my agenda, which narrowed down the sustainability, sustainability issue on the energy industry. This I talk about an attempt to create what we call a social contract between the industry and the society. In doing so, World Economic Forum, or WEF, has established the energy for society principle. What do we need a social contract? This slide shows a few examples of problem and public resistance to energy industry. Our license to operate is directly linked to sustainability of our industry. Energy accessibility is connected to many controversial issues on a national or even on a global scale. Ranging from climate change, new frontier reserves, such as deep water and Arctic, the fracking technology to many geopolitical unless. Energy is essential for economic development and well-being of mankind, but it is finite. And most come from non renewable resources. People want and need energy, 
but most are not willing to listen or accept the trade-off to have access to affordable energies. The word NIMBY or not in my backyard is commonly used in our industry. Take a look at more reason for the social contract. Look at this finding from the World Econ Forum surveys in uh, 2012. You can see that people's perception for energy industry has declined. Part of this is due to, number one, manipulation of energy policy by politicians. Issues such as price subsidies, using energy pricing scheme to gain political advantage or support. Or secondly, the connection to climate change and other environmental concerns. And thirdly, at least half of the 10 most profitable companies in the world are energy companies. To add more to the big picture, you can see from the same survey that as a spokesperson, corporate CEOs have become less and less credible in public opinion. You see that one, you see that the arrow of the CEOs is pointing down from 50% to 38%. Only the government officials were doing, were doing worse. To put the last two slides together and keep in mind that public perception are becoming more and more important to our license to operate. Things are not looking so good for myself and my peer in the same industry. Need to say more on the agency of a social contract. So the energy society principle were drawn up. There are five of them. The signatory to the five principle are committed to number one, to secure an affordable access to energy. Number two, efficient energy system. Number three, less responsible citizen. Number four, contributing to economic development. And number five, promoting energy literacy. This fifth point is probably new to most of the people in this room. But it is the point where we did see that the industry as a whole perhaps lags behind most. But yet it is very important. And in irregular society, we will lead to a spiral of death of the industry. It will, shape our, it will shape up many policies that will not support sustainable energy consumption and therefore not creating a platform for a sustainable development or a sustainable future of our mankind. These are examples of signatory to the principle. You can see that they range from the biggest company in the world in 2013, or from the Fortune 1 to the smallest company. PTT then was number 81 on the global fortune list, but we were among the founding signatories, or the first one to endorse the principle publicly. These are my quotes that reflect what I believe regarding sustainability. Leadership, education, and literacy are the fundamental in sustainability and sustainable development. Here you can see the word learning prior. It is the concept that I believe we guide our organization on a sustainable journey. I will come back to this last section, to this at the last section of my talk. WEF and I are not alone in pressing emphasis on energy literacy and education. You can see here that uh, even the US government has embarked on the Energy Education Act. Actually, uh, in the picture is Mr. Stanley Chu, the Under Secretary of Energy. He's uh, one of the uh, Nobel laureate. These are the goals that they set aiming at innovation, creativity, and education or energy literacy. 
define sustainable development. The key takes away from this last few slides are the relevance and con connection of any literacy education to the sustainable society. Now let me move to the issue closer to home. How about the needs for energy literacy in Thailand? What has been done and why it is so important? I must apologize for the non-Thai audience in this room because these are few of the slides that are in Thai, but we will talk to you too here. The anti-energy industry notes on social media in Thailand always have one unique feature. Because of the un uniqueness of the group that I mentioned earlier, we are a state-owned enterprise that is listed in the stock exchange. Our own financial performance is really transparent to the public. This should be good news to our stakeholders, shouldn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, you may believe it or not, there is a segment in the general population who are not happy with our operating profit but not in the way that the most charitable in the world would be. They are not happy with our organization because they believe that we are too profitable. As a result, they believe that the energy price that they are paying for must be unreasonably expensive. Consequently, they wish to take back the PTD group to the people or to the country as a mean to lower the energy price. I'm not sure if they knew that currently the Minister of Finance owns about 70% of PTT directly or indirectly. They went on to say that the retail pump price nationwide is too high because of PTT and PTT should use its annual profit to subsidize the gasoline or diesel price at the service station. Some cited that our retail gasoline is among the highest in the world, despite the fact that Thailand is endowed with enormous petroleum reserve. Some even say our oil and gas reserves are more than that some country in the OPEC, so on and so forth. Honestly, honestly speaking, I wish some of these false claims were true. And most of the time, these people are confused between energy ministries national energy policy with PTT's corporate strategy, especially on issues such as price subsidy, oil fund, taxation scheme, on retail price structure, most of which has nothing to do uh, beyond control of PTT. Let's pass those issues of misconception for a moment and take a look at some facts on this slide. This is the comparison among countries on energy consumption to generate GDP or what we call the energy intensities. The unit is on y-axis TOE per million dollars or the amount of energy used to generate millions of US dollars of GDP and the y-axis is the timeline. To read the graph, the lower the line, the more energy efficient the country is to generate its GDP. Here we see that Singapore used the least amount of energy per million US dollar among Asian countries. Obviously, the country is not manufacturing based. It's generated most of its GDP from the knowledge base or service business. The alarming thing for our country is the trend shown here. As we can see that the line for Thailand inclined upwards, indicating less and less energy efficiency as time progresses. This is not what we would like to see. This trend does not support sustainable energy consumption. And why does this happen? Let me offer you part of the reason. And if you look carefully at the complaints on social media about energy, 
You see that most people understand that access to affordable energy is the right or entitlement. Accessing to affordable energy is always assumed or taken for granted. And the society normally don't pay as much attention to the duty that the people have in order to attain or get such a right. This cartoon shows that understanding both the euro and the red is equally important. A consumer must understand both his right and duty. This is a fundamental error of energy literacy. Access to energy must be managed both on supply and demand side. Normally, we learn in Economy 101 that the market mechanism determines the equilibrium point between price and availability of a product in the market. A product that is hard to find or hard to produce we have high price, and thus consumer won't consume a lot and will seek alternative to that particular product. Energy price subsidy distorts this market mechanism and increase consumer to consume more and more energy. Or even worse, make wrong investment decisions regarding the types of energy to consume. To illustrate this point, Thailand used to be a gas exporting country. But unfortunately, we also have long history of high subsidy scheme on LPG or cooking gas. The retail price of gas that we have had represents only a fraction of the cost to produce. Our national gas consumption has gone up dramatically as the gas price has been controlled. And now, as a result, we are a gas importing country. And this is yet another example of the importance of the energy literacy. So now I move to the last part of my presentation this afternoon. This is what I mentioned to the CO surveys and what you heard briefly in the short video clip at the beginning. And I will talk about our taking on sustainable development. Sustainability is yet another term that recently adds a new dimension to the meaning of corporate world. Like the term green, or the term high value added, or the term marketing 3.0 that came before it. Now I'm sure that this term is mentioned a lot in boardrooms around the world. And in many places, if you recall from the Weirdo Creek, this is among the things on the top of the priority list of most CEOs. At PTT Group, this diagram depicts pressure that we are applied on us by different entities. For us, Sustainability requires proper answer to call the order from different dimensions. Let me share a few of them with you. Number one, as a business entity, PT Group, group must always ensure some acceptable returns to our investor. Number two, we must fulfill requirements from the state at a state-owned enterprise that has a duty to ensure national energy security. Number three, we must maintain our license to operate from the community that we operate in. And number four, because our visibility and our size, we sometimes are linked to many political issues. And if you regularly use the repowery road, you might see examples of what I'm talking about at our front way from the time to time. I believe there are still some people camping outside our front gate today. Number five, our domestic resources are depleting. The easy oil is no longer available. We are now venturing into more and more difficult territory to do business. Number six, 
we must keep up with the pace of technology, technology evaluation, evolution. Our competitors are getting more and more high tech. Technology and innovation can be a different differentiation between winner and loser. Number seven, and I have forgotten, have I forgotten the climate change issue? Having said all this, let me share with you how we are taking on the sustainability challenges. The PTT group is building a learning track for sustainability. As the name implies, it consists of the three elements. Learning of three different dimensions will be offered through three types of institution. From left to right, they are number one, the Thailand Energy Academy. Number two, PLLI, or the PTT Leadership and Learning Institute. And number three, RISE, or Rayong Institute of Science and Technology, and RASA, which stands for Rayong Science Academy. Starting from left, the soft knowledge, we together with the Minister of Energy established the Thailand Energy Academy uh, in charge for TEA with the intention to promote the energy literacy to the general public. We start with opinion leaders from seven sector, which consists of media, academia, NGOs, government, energy industry, business, and the most important, politician. At meeting about 75 people per class, the curriculum is about four and a half months long. We just finished the third class of TA three. A few weeks ago, and the reception from the opinion leader has been great. We intend to create a network of NG literate leaders to promote sustainability and consumption in this society. The class will meet once a month from once a month from lunch to dinner for four months. Any hot issue misconception incidents like the blackout in the south, the oil spill in Rion, and myths about energy and energy policy are discussed among the class participants and the lecturer. These lecturers are nationally renowned gurus in their own rights for many sectors. Domestic and overseas field trips are blended in dealing with duration to keep hands-on experience in energy industry and related innovation to the class participant. There is also a group of projects for our participants to present at the end of the curriculum. For those who are interested, you can visit the website as shown here. Documents used in all the classes are probably available in the website as well. And you can also see some of the photos of the activities. Here are the sample photos of the participants and activities. We also take the participants in every class to offshore platform in the Gulf of Thailand. And the bottommost photo was taken at the Sunny Banja Solar Farm. The budget was a new investment in solar energy. On the other side of the scale, we also believe in deep drive approach in frontier knowledge and research in science and technologies. PTT Group is establishing a world class research university and a world class science high school for gifted children in the science and mathematics. Both, both these institutes will be located in Rio province. There will be residential learning facility and will be small in size, but will be very selective on the student, faculties, T 
teachers must all pass very strict selection criteria. The school will have very small ratio of student to teacher. Our university or RISE will initially offer only graduate program in energy and molecular science. We will also have, for the first time in Thailand, a full-time postdoctoral program to foster environments that enable research excellence for the country's top brain who have passion in science and technology. All the students will receive scholarship with no commitment and there will no string attached for future employment in the PTT group. And the main purpose of this establishment is to raise the level of our national competitiveness in technology and innovation, which I truly believe is a future contribution to the sustainability. For the university, our goal is to be recognized among the top 50 research universities globally in 2035, about 20 years after the opening. This is more than a challenge, but we are aspired to be, and we will fully believe we have the resource to attain such challenge goals. Good example of such accomplishment are top Korean research university that are among the top rank in less than 30 years. Let me say again that I believe that this will be a very difficult but not impossible to attain. We expect that both RISE and RASA will start admitting students in 2015. I hope this will really start a new era of research excellence and education that increase the national competitiveness and sustainability in the long run. The last composition of the diet is the PILI or PTT Leadership and Learning Institute. As the name implies, it is designed to provide lifetime leadership learning for all PTT's members. Our vision is to have PLRI as the hub of learning of the PTT group. We believe that leadership quality or attribute is required for our employee at our level and in our function. Specialized learning programs are designed for success, succession planning as well as for self-improvement for an employee at different stage of his or her career. As we are transforming into a knowledge-based organization, our employees are offered opportunity in core learning as well as functional learning. Business units are encouraged to form their specialized academy for knowledge management and sharing the best practice. These learning entities or institutions were tailor made to cater to different segments of people, from opinion leaders in the Thai society, the scientists, researchers, to our employees. The Thailand Energy Academy was created to promote energy literacy for our society at large. The Lyons Research University and the Rasa Science High School for gifted children are being built to hone our brightest young mind in Thailand to foster future innovation. And last but not least, PLLI are being created for lifetime learning of corporate employees of PTT Group. From a business perspective, this program will help create a pool of leaders and talented human resources 
to support our full global cooperation and fulfill our aspiration to be a learning organization. For society, energy literacy will bring about policies and behavior that promote sustainable energy consumption. And ultimately, our focus and investment in science and technology will foster new frontier research and innovation. This should create solutions and technologies that will yield sustainable benefit to our country. Ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe that education is one of the most important focus areas in our company's sustainable development mandate. Our learning triad concept and program showcases how we are integrating sustainability to the society and our nation at the macro level. All this is a long-term proposition. In my remaining two years as a CEO at PTT, I certainly won't see if the initiative will bear all the fruits that I have intentionally seen before. But I believe it is the right time and the right thing to do, and I hope you would agree with me. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcome Mr. Nobuhiko Koba. Thank you, Professor Stoddham. And thanks, DSF colleagues, Stephen and Kushita-san, for giving me such occasion to share the views in front of distinguished VIP guests, as well as the audiences, to share the views on uh, how we are going to create a sustainable energy platform. Before uh, talking my presentation, uh, the last weekend I was, I was going to Alipten with my friends. And I was so shocked how the attack was so severe. But also it sufficiently reminded me how society in an entire was so rich, big of it, and cheerful and powerful and rich. But it was finally not sustainable. No stakeholders should be egoistic. Uh, we should be on the same ground. That's why I'm so appreciative to have such an opportunity to listen to the views and to share the views how we are going to create a sustainable ground. Um, some of you, or many of you, may not know Toyota, may not know the name of Toyota, uh, so that's fair to start who we are. Uh, we are Toyota Motor Corporation. <laughs> and we founded in 1937, founded by Kim Sotoya. Uh, initially, that was a venture business. Uh, the initial company was an old looming machine. And the son of the founder of Toyota Auto Industry uh, was making a venture business for making the car. That was the start of the history. And currently, the numbers of the global employee uh, was about 330,000 uh, in consolidated basis, including the people in China. And you can see the business results, as you can see, as you can see in the slide. One of the highlight, uh, to, one of the point to be highlighted in, uh, is in, in the bar charts. Blue one uh, is showing the sales results of last year. And the yellow bar uh, is showing the production results of last year. Thailand is the five fifth largest uh, market for global trade. But also, uh, importantly, uh, Thailand is the third largest uh, uh, country for our uh, for the for global trade. Clearly, Thailand is one of the most important production hub in for global trade. Uh, 
many of you may know that uh, Toyota is, has been making a uh, number of cars in uh, these plants, like the uh, Hilux or the others, or Camry or the others, or other passenger cars. And uh, the car which has been produced in a number of, of the production plants in Thailand has been exported to different regions. Uh, clearly, uh, this, uh, these cars, uh, especially for Hilux or the other pickups or pickup based uh, SUV, uh, the Thailand is the core center of the Toyota global uh, production. And not only production portfolio, but also uh, R&D uh, in Thailand is also quite important. Uh, this shows uh, which area we have R&D center uh, in the world. Uh, this year, actually, a 10-year anniversary uh, for TMA, we call it TMA uh, tech center uh, in Thailand. Uh, and the number of employees is <laughs> so the number is not in my head. <laughs> and uh, the main major R&D activity here in Thailand uh, is to design uh, a pickup based truck uh, and, and also calibration of natural gas vehicles, uh, which we have in market here in Thailand. And also the other activities, like the technical collaboration with PPP, uh, is, 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 is positioned uh, in quite important role. Because energy and the vehicle, that, that's the kind of you know, husband and wife. So uh, we need energy. But energy is consumed by vehicle. So we need the both. So uh, let's come to uh, my presentation. We say, we have said triple E. Many, many people say that, okay, uh, when I has been uh, told, when I have been, uh, been asked to talk about energy, uh, people may be interested in uh, what is, uh, how to do that is to hydrate, or how to do that is to hydrate fuel cell. But actually, we have believed that our responsibility for, for the energy is not necessarily on on the use of the fuel and energy, but also we need the energy for production and transport for the goods, and of course the use, and uh, we need uh, employment, and eventually big sales and tax and, and has been happening, and finally scrap and recycling could influence to the environment or society. So, these are the responsibilities we have recognized as a vehicle manufacturer. But to make it simple, today uh, I'm talking about the energy, especially for the use. Um, Dr. Bain is highlight, was highlighting uh, no easy oil is available. Uh, but still, many reasonable analysts or other super measures has said, ah, no need, uh, don't be panicked. Uh, oil will be available, will be available. Uh, I, when I was a child, and uh, when I was a student in the elementary school, I was told from my teacher that uh, uh, oil will last in the next 40 years. But this is still the case, actually. Uh, thanks to the latest development of the technology for exploration or recovery, uh, the recent uh, analyst said, uh, the most recent reasonable analyst said that oil will last in the next 50 years or plus. As an engineer, uh, we believe uh, the development, the future further development of the technology for exploration or recovery. Uh, but the point is, it is geographically uh, unbalanced. This uh, global map is showing which region has energy and which region 
does it. The region is white, like uh, former Soviet Union, Middle East, Africa, Latin America. As a region, they are and they will be net energy exporters. They have the energy. They have energy to export. And region in dark green is uh, categorized as net energy importance. They don't have the energy, but they have the energy. But uh, the amount is not sufficient to fill in uh, their domestic demand. Only a, uh, a, a exceptional region uh, is observed in the US. Many of you have had never heard that shale, shale gas revolution or whatever. Uh, thanks to shale gas revolution, uh, they are trying to be uh, energy independent region. So it may create, or it may, uh, it may create some change on energy politics or energy geopolitics, but we do not know. But the point this time is that region here, like ASEAN region, or China, or India, which is demand center, which will be major demand center, doesn't have and will not have sufficient amount of energy. But still, we need here uh, energy to uh, grow the economy and the society. So that's why a uh, uh, policy has been now happening, and it looks a little bit chaotic. I don't want to explain detail. So this is one of the play much chart of Gomorrah, which primary energy has been consumed by which sector. And the gray flow uh, is indicated uh, as a wasted energy. And on overall in the society, there are many kinds of primary energy, like crude oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear, or biomasses. And it, will be, it has been converted to the energy carrier, like uh, gasoline, diesel, or the biofuels, or the others. They finally consume at uh, different sectors, like transport, uh, residential sectors, or industries. But two sectors are, that can be highlighted in power sector, as well as transport sector, which has been categorized as major part of energy has been wasted at these uh, sectors. And clearly, vehicle and tra road transport sector is one of them. Thus, we have recognized that we need to improve efficiency as much as possible. So this is our basic philosophy or strategy, how to save the energy, how to improve the efficiency. So left hand side, left side the brief shows that the basic concept that we need to improve efficiency or we need to reduce the energy per person kilometer. In order to do it, we uh, should conduct the measure or uh, having fuel, eco, better fuel economy of the car, and also smooth the traffic flow, as well as modal mix, which I'm going to show uh, you later. And also, energy diversification uh, is also one of the pillars to be considered, which contains uh, less carbon content or external, less external dependencies for countries. For instance, Thailand uh, for crude oil. I think uh, self supply ratio for Thailand for crude is about 30 to 40 percent. So this means uh, uh, 6 to 70 percent of crude has been imported from, from the Middle East or the others. If something happens in the Middle East, Thailand will be in trouble. So that's why uh, external dependency uh, is also one of the key. To be highlighted. And three third pillar is that it's on the public or consumers. 
Of course, uh, we're going to create, we're going to make better or efficient cars. Or energy company can provide biofuels, natural gas, or the other renewable energy. But if people doesn't pay attention, or if people doesn't select these combinations, uh, the policy or reasonable policy cannot be realized. So that's why we need to create, we need to get consumers' choice on the reasonable uh, combination between efficient cars as well as uh, new energy. So I'm talking about energy. Uh, I'm talking about uh, fuel economy improvement as well as energy diversification. This is a uh, basic uh, philosophy, how to improve the vehicle efficiency, how to, have, how to, uh, how to get better mileage in the car. Of course, uh, many of you uh, may uh, say that uh, you have hybrid, but hybrid is not only the solution. Hybrid is just a transition to improve overall vehicle efficiency. So still, uh, improving uh, internal exchange of internal combustion energy uh, as well as transmission exchange uh, still uh, we need to improve further. Of course, the aerodynamic uh, coefficient or lightweight material, uh, low, uh, low, uh, loading resistance, uh, all combination uh, has to be integrated into the vehicles, not only hybrid but also many. I'm not expecting that many of you are engine engineers, but I'm, a, I'm an engine engineer and I'm still I'm a piston engineer. And inside the company, you know, uh, many of my colleagues, many colleagues are criticizing me that uh, uh, the era of internal combustion engine is over. So in the next decade, uh, we are having the era of uh, electrified mobility, like uh, electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid cars, or fuel cell cars. But I'm still strongly believing that the future or potential of internal combustion engine, like the gasoline engine or diesel engine. I'm going to explain. I'm trying to explain uh, to you how to improve efficiency of the engine itself. This is the top. Uh, sorry. This is the chart uh, over engine speed and engine torque. The basic concept to improve the efficiency of the engine is that, okay, first, basic efficiency of the engine can, uh, or internal combustion engine can be observed in relatively low to mid engine speed and high up engine torque. High end growth. And to, to, to make it improve, of course, peak summary efficiency should be improved, or area uh, of the peak summary efficiency could be, should be expanded, or in combination with transmission technology, usage frequency on this uh, peak summary efficiency should be expanded. So these combinations uh, could enhance. Uh, the further improvement of internal combustion engine. I strongly believe that still we, need, we have uh, potential. And the other reason why, and, and, and then and then also we have the trans, we have the hybrid transmission technology. The reason why we have Toyota has chosen the hybrid uh, transmission as a, one of the core competencies is because, of course. Uh, thanks to uh, electric, electric motor management and in conjunction with high summer exchange in gasoline engine, it provides better fuel exchange. But the point is that in light uh, vehicles like uh, electric vehicles, driving cars, or fuel cell cars, please have a look at uh, each component. So the uh, components in dotted line, uh, basically uh, they are the same. They are commons. Uh, they are transferred from hybrid vehicles to any other futuristic vehicles. So we are still not sure which direction uh, in the next 20, 30, or 50 years 
who will be the winner? We do not know. But at least, no matter how the mobility is uh, going to the elect pure electric or pure hydrogen, still our experience on the technology or production can be transferred from hybrid vehicle to any other future vehicles. That's why we have chosen a hybrid transportation system as a core component. Next, I'm talking about energy diversification. I was talking uh, in Lawrence in Gamoa uh, There are many kinds of primary energy, and also there are many kinds of energy carriers. Of course, uh, we know that the majority of the energy to be used for cars, for truck, uh, gasoline, or diesel. Well, in, in Thailand, natural gas or biofuel has been widely used. But clearly, as, as highlighted by my, myself, Previous chart, internal combustion engine, regardless, regardless with or without hybrid transmission, could, uh, is, could play a quite important role in the future. No matter how primary energy uh, will be diversified from crude to natural gas or coal to biomass. And clearly, uh, say, it can be said that Thailand is one of the most, most advanced countries for diversified energy. This is a rough portfolio of our products uh, from E20 compatible vehicles and E85 vehicles, natural gas car, hybrid cars, as well as diesel. We do not see such diversified portfolio uh, lineup in any other country. So this is uh, how important uh, the dialogue between policy makers and manufacturers, key manufacturers are. Because Thailand has clearly indicated in their energy policy paper that we need, uh, we are prioritizing natural gas, we are prioritizing biofuel, ethanol. So in the response to such a policy, clear policy dialogue, we could successfully have launched the products in accordance with the policy guideline. So that's a success story. So I'm, I'm, I'm strong, I strongly believe in expecting this sort of dialogue between energy stakeholders uh, will be kept unchanged. And, and in as a result of energy diversification, of course, all energy demand is growing. And dark blue is showing gasoline and, and, and gray zone is the diesel. But clearly, alternative energy, like the natural gas, the LPG, the biodiesel, or bioethanol, can become a significant proportion. So, of course, it takes time, it takes decades, or decades. But uh, we need to keep this momentum. Then, uh, clearly, it will uh, mitigate. Energy program. Concerning the bio biofuels, uh, there are many kinds of bio uh, acids like sugarcane, cassava, palm fruit, uh, whatever. And uh, for, for general product, uh, all Toyota vehicle is now compatible with uh, E10 or E20, and some model is compatible with E85 for diesel. Uh, is up to D7, and clearly PTT is taking a strong initiative for launching a uh, hydro-treated uh, battery solar oil. That, that is hydro efficient. We are uh, recently launching uh, the products in combining between hybrid technology and pure battery electric. So I'm, 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 I'm show, uh, it is showing some uh, two minute films. It is not really technical technology film. It is uh, uh, shown in, in, in the motor show. It is rather uh, to, to the 
the public, so you may be a little bit bored. Please, be relaxed. Uh, to 20 to 30 kilometer reach, 
automatically whole e energy consumption in fleet can be reduced significantly. Fuel economy, uh, better fuel economy efficient cars, in fact, uh, needs some time to be realized because we have much free numbers in the market. Turnover ratio is limited. But once traffic flow is improved, all of a sudden, uh, energy demand can be reduced. So that's why we have uh, recognized that this is one of also important measures to be had. So in this perspective, uh, Dota Mountain Thailand has been uh, initiating one of ITS programs uh, together with uh, Thai stakeholders. The basic concept is that uh, transmitters are equipped with uh, trucks or some cars uh, running in Bangkok. And the data uh, in our average, uh, average vehicle speed in certain uh, streets uh, can be collected to the data center and feedback to, to the vehicle, which uh, role is now generated and uh, eventually guiding the driver to use alternative route in order to reduce or in order to make as much smoother traffic. Hybrid vehicles or other vehicle, efficient vehicle car could provide a uh, better economy on condition that smoother traffic is realized. So that's why we are so motivated to realize that smooth the traffic flow. Beyond uh, ITS demonstration in Bangkok, uh, we are uh, recently announcing uh, next gen uh, so called multimodal uh, demonstration project, uh, featuring uh, micro micro mobility. But in this sense, uh, Bangkok is already uh, conducting multimodal transport system because you have uh, bike taxi, you have to to uh, in Chile. Uh, so not only passenger car or like trucks, you have you already you have uh, different kind of uh, transport measures. But our soul is that uh, connecting these uh, different uh, vehicle uh, measures uh, by by smartphone or the others. And also, eventually, the micro mobility can be switched to the e bikes or e mobility to the three vehicles, and enabling uh, the final miles to the final destination. I'm sorry to hear. Reservations can be made with ease from Harmo's application, making 
picking up your harbour ride at the station, smooth and seamless. You can then leave the vehicle at any of the many parking stations, allowing you to take advantage of this free-flowing network anytime, anywhere. The more people that use this convenient harbour system, the more the harbour sensor can gather and analyse a view of the city in its entirety and use this information to suggest a more efficient use of private and public transport. With everyone using various means of transportation, according to the traffic situation, traffic congestion can be reduced. By doing a small part, you will be increasing the comfort of your city as a whole. Getting about town can be a joy. Help to steer your city in a better direction. The fulfillment of this vision is now underway. Sorry, Phil was so messy. Before, before having the harm, I, I probably I need to upgrade my laptop. <laughs> uh, the, the point is that uh, in combination between the micro mobility, mobility and public transport, uh, the consumer I think uh, uh, upon request guided uh, with the uh, most reasonable, most economical, most less carbon. Uh, uh, transport measures. And uh, many of these technology pieces have been already in demonstration in Tokyo. So uh, some of, some of, if some of you uh, may be interested in knowing more, uh, I'm happy to provide uh, any information if, if it is the case. And I have two final slides. I was talking how Toyota has been making efforts to improve the efficiency in the vehicle itself or society overall. But as highlighted by Dr. Bailey before, education, uh, guidance to the public, is also playing quite important role. The point I, point I have uh, highlighted in this chart is that Left hand side is the index of parameters which normally, cons uh, normally consumers is paying attention on uh, selecting the cars. People are the car, people is taking the car because this is comfort, this is differentiated, this is attractive, this is economic, this is more spacious. Actually, I'm driving. Uh, GTA 6 Sport Coupe, uh, I'm emitting much car, but uh, I, yeah, after uh, purchasing GTA 6 I have changed my commuting style from car to train. So finally, so less car, this is my excuse. Uh, but right hand side is showing how society over or how government is paying attention on cars. Because the number of cars is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why environmental consciousness, safety, or energy diversification is getting more critical. Which normally, or not necessarily, consumers pay attention. So that's why we need to coordinate these two sometimes contradictory tasks. So in this perspective, as a liquid manufacturer, we put uh, attractiveness or extra attractiveness to the cars for alternative energy vehicles or the other new and efficient vehicles. But also, we are expecting policy makers for long-lasting and comprehensive policy for consumers to guide to the more reasonable direction. This is one thing to be highlighted. And second thing is that as an energy engineer, I said I'm strongly believing the future potential of engine engine or engineering. I'm sure many of you are 
leader or maybe future leader of each institution, department, company, or any other schools or whatever. But please do not forget and also encourage young engineers uh, to be a, to be producing more attractive products. As highlighted, Dr. Bain has again. Engineer's job, engineer's role, is to put additional value, or extra value, on primary objects, and to get the money, and to, to reach, to enrich the society. Actually, this is one of example, not example, uh, which I was when I was a apprentice, uh, a young engineer, uh, I have been so addicted to this project making uh, best of the economy out. The final result was reached to 3,000 km per liter. So that's why I still strongly believe in that uh, scale engine or vehicle has the potential to improve relationship. Engineer can do it. So, so that's why, I, as a final remark, to the future or to current leader to the department or company or institution. Please be the future of engineers and please encourage them to do so. Thank you very much. Let me join and welcome Dr. Tino Kiriya. Well, I did not expect to come here as an energy expert, but somehow uh, listening to the two great corporations, I could say that I have learned so much about the side of the supplier and also the side of the user, which is for your time, motor corporation. Out of my experience, in fact, I just came back from uh, City called Kita Kyushu. It's in Kyushu Island. And that city was an industrialized city. And in the 1960s, they were so polluted. I went there on, on, a, on a conference and they showed the picture of the city of Kyushu, it was a fully polluted city. And they decided to go green. At the present moment, it's truly green. You go into the industrial city, you don't feel anything. There is no pollution being felt. All the sea water becomes so clear and clean. It gives me the hope that uh, it is possible. The possibility to really create a sustainable energy platform it's right here. It is possible. There were examples that uh, some cities could do that. And I think that, that we have to try to strive for that too. Thailand has been so efficient in using energy. We are, I think, number 80 in about 115 countries. It is uh, we are still wasting a lot, a lot of energy, and we have a lot to learn on how to try to uh, get rid of all the pollution. I remember that uh, when I was in the government, the first object as an economist is that we imported too much oil, crude oil. And we had to try to reduce the consumption of crude oil. So we tried to think of what we should could do. In fact, we, in the end, thought about renewable energy. And that was the beginning of gas so far. We have uh, uh, been successful in inducing PDT in fact to stop importing MTBE and to use the ethanol for 10% of 
to mix with the gas uh, in to become gas of oil. And that was the beginning of the use of our agricultural produce, that is sugarcane uh, from sugarcane to tapioca, to be able to create uh, a cleaner environment. Because uh, uh, gas hall would do not have to you know pollution from lead poisoning in TBE. It was a hard time to do that. I could tell you that political decisions have to be have to be brave, even though anyone would know what the benefits. But we also have to oppose all the opposition in doing that. Somehow we were successful. It was my first experience of how to reduce crude uh, uh, oil import, which is in fact to try to create a better environment. Then I am involved in the search for uh, renewable energy resources or sustainable energy resources. So I was so glad that I was the chairman of the uh, of uh, a company called Celebrity, which is producing, which is going to constructing a very uh, large hydropower plant across the Mekong River. Certainly, we were opposed by NGO, we were opposed by Cambodia and Vietnam for the possible environmental concerns. But somehow, we were able to get all the experts all over the world, from Switzerland, from everywhere, to try to find solutions and to convince all the uh, neighboring countries that the environmental impact could be resolved. It might not be exactly zero, but it could be resolved, most of it could be resolved. And we were able to get all the approval of the Mekong River uh, a council uh, river commission that we could go on with the project. That will certainly sell electricity to Thailand. So I am glad that at this moment, Thai government is trying to, to promote solar power plants, to promote hydro power plants, and to promote uh, wind farms, to try to uh, substitute for oil and, and more uh, environmental, uh, more other resources that create environmental problems. But somehow we still need much more. I have read one article that said that San Francisco is a city that now is using only 50% from oil as energy of the use, and the other 50% is from green energy. This is interesting, and this is the, what we have to think that if San Francisco can do that, what about Bangkok? Why could not we do it? This depends again on uh, maybe energy literacy that Dr. Penny is trying to, to promote and to educate all the Bangkok people. But somehow, I'm more excited that uh, this uh, conference is supported by the ASF. This is a chemical company. But I think that the ASF must be very concerned about the environment problem. And I heard that there's now a, a very new technology called artificial reef. Probably no more than I do. But let me tell everyone here, artificial reef, as I read about it, is some a chemical processing, a process that can separate hydrogen and oxygen and put them into containers. And imagine that hydrogen can be used instead of as a substitute of oil, a substitute of gasoline. Now you have to clean the clean and run car. You have the green car. You can have electricity 
driven up car or hydrogen driven driven vehicle by hydrogen electricity generation by hydrogen. And air is abundant. So you will have unlimited environment. And artificial leaf has already been tested and experimented. So it's so near to, to our life. You will see nanotechnology out of the solar panel. I have a few solar panels in my group uh, called, under the company called CK Power, which is a volume company. We also hold majority chairs of a few solar panel uh, plants. But the more exciting is the price of solar panel compared to what I built a few years ago is reduced by half now. The, the latest price quoted to us is, is about 16 cents per kilowatt hour. This is amazing. So we are looking at how to use this lower price solar panel to substitute in Myanmar because they use still the generator, oil gas generator. And it costs them 40 cents per kilowatt hour. Imagine more than 100% profit to take the solar panel on the roof of the plants. But the problem is we can only use it for five hours a day. So we need more energy. But again, just to have it five hours a day will save a lot of money of cost of production in Myanmar. But nanotechnology, nanotech solar panel can further reduce the price of solar panel and it will become as economical as the, the present oil price. Again, this is a second alternative source that beside the artificial leaf to, to get the hydrogen. Now we get the nanotech solar panel, which is, you can produce it under 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Then, I heard that in Portuguese, they started to create what they call a web farm. They can create electricity generation out of the wave in the sea. This is a deal, still amazing because it's natural things that you can do under the water. You don't see any environmental spoilers, spoilers no pollutions, eyesight pollutions or anything. And it can create electricity. And it has been done in portable, portable. So these are the things of the future. And I think that uh, I'm glad that uh, this conference has been created in Thailand. And I hope that uh, it will give us all the applications and knowledge and further uh, 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 conferences, because of some parts of it would be done to be able to tell us that how we have to search for uh, better energy resources. We have to search for better use of the energy resources. That's what Toyota has been doing now. Thank you very much. That's a lovely both of us. Like you said, thank you very much. And the sustainability consortium is looking forward to your presentation in the next the distinctive lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.